Hello, this is John Curtis, and you're listening to the Beat Blue Football Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Kendrick, and joining me for the show, we've got Nick Davey. Good evening. And we've got Ashley Carter. Hello. So, Ashley, on Twitter, you're, you're uh, at Sean Barker, Doc, and uh, you make a documentary about Sean Barker and the injuries he's had. Yeah, um, yeah, we met with Sean uh, a couple of years back when he was launching his foundation in Derby. Um, and sort of, he was coming to sort of the end of his three-year rehabilitation then. And it looked like he'd got to kind of get back into the Derby team when we had that uh, promotion push under Steve McLaren. Uh-huh. And it kind of just never happened. He never really got anywhere near the team. And it just kind of left kind of weird. So we met him a couple more times and asked him if he'd be interested in making a little film about sort of his journey. Yeah. And he said yes. Okay. Um, so how he's, he was out for a good, what, two, three years. He, he sort of came back, didn't he? And, but he didn't... He, he, he came back. He made a couple of um, 21 appearances, uh, declared himself fit with about, I think, about three months left to go in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it looked like he might be going to Sheffield United to join Nigel Clough there. Uh, it didn't really happen. Uh, then obviously Nigel got sacked from there. So it was just, yeah, it's just, it's, like I said, it's just one of those things that just kind of never happened. You just, you just had those three years. But I think, I think the worst thing about it was that it was initially he got told it was six months, then it was nine months, then twelve months, and it was never, he was never told it's going to be about three years. It just kept happening and there was setbacks and little niggles and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Things like psychology that makes, you know, makes a big impact. Well, that's what I was going to ask. With a player in general, like the the psychology of it must be really interesting for a player, like because I guess having the mental strength to come back must be important as well as how they feel physically. Well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, that's kind of the main reason I want to make the film because he is with what uh, the, like the, the company I work for does is, is work with football clubs in general, so we interact with sort of league players not regularly, but often enough to get a sense of kind of what footballers are like. And when you meet Sean, he's not like that at all. He's you wouldn't think he was a footballer to meet him. He, he doesn't really like football. Um, he's kind of he came into it as a career reluctantly. Uh-huh. Um, and then to still have that insane drive to want to come back and overcome things that most people wouldn't have done is just interesting. He's just and everyone that knows him just says he was never ever down about it. He was just always positive and enthusiastic and just determined to get back the whole time. Yeah, was it something that made you particularly interested in Sean Barker as a player? Or yeah, definitely. I think when he was at the club. Um, I think immediately when he signed, he was kind of there was something different about him, and then being made captain, um, obviously doing doing the majority of the press and stuff like that post post match stuff, you, you you get a sense that he's very like incredibly intelligent, a very cultured guy, uh, very positive, and very um, everyone was into that of um, everyone that we've interviewed so far for the film that worked with him, uh, just said he had a reputation of just being. Like I say, just commanding, but on and off the pitch, like as, as a club captain, you just organise things with like players' wide and stuff like that. He's just very influential. Mm-hmm. What, so, what, who, who, um, like what sort of people have you got? Who have you interviewed for the film? Uh, it's the first lot with sort of Sean's family, like his wife and his dad, um, and a few of the like the media people from like the papers and radio uh, around Derby. And we've been focusing more on players for the next few months. We did um, did Roy McFarland, who was a part of the Derby team under Brian Clough uh, in the seventies that won the league, uh, and he was a very similar player to Sean, sort of very sort of like talismanic figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we sort of a few people he played with the Blackpool, like Ian Everett, David Fox. Then uh, later in the month after the playoffs, we sort of uh, talked to a few of the Derby players, a couple of the staff members, and Darren Wassell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a few. There's a big, there's a list of about thirty odd people we're still trying to get after. Um, and that's the thing. That's how well liked he is. We've had literally no one said no yet. Everyone <laughs> said yes, and it's just a matter of trying to sort of arrange them. Okay. Well, uh, good luck with that. Is there a, is there anything people can use to check out? I've obviously mentioned the Twitter. Is there anything else? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just Twitter. Uh, I mean, on Facebook and Instagram as well. But yeah, it's just just the social media just to follow the progress of it. Because like I say, it kind of started out with it. 15 minutes short and all these people got involved and it's kind of it's turned into kind of a quite a about a 60 minute feature now alright well good luck with that I just uh, want to move on and ask you a bit about Derby's season uh, what what do you make of um, you know getting in the playoffs is it a fair you know a few efforts this season I don't, I don't, it's, it's, I don't know if it's there's a, I think there's a thing with Derby fans that they have kind of a weird perspective on the club like I think a lot of Derby fans think maybe the club's a bit bigger than it is mm-hmm. and I think that's didn't get helped with spending so much money in the transfer window, but it seems it, it's weird that we finished fifth and we're sort of in the play of whole season. It just feels like a massive failure. There's just a sense that we've kind of failed the season. What? Did, I'm kind of quite content with that, to be honest. 
What did you make of Paul Clement getting sacked earlier in the season? It's, it's hard. It's hard to know because I mean, it's hard to know why it happened. I think that's. I think that's the biggest thing. Obviously, there's all sorts of rumours and, and stuff like that going around. But I mean, it's hard to know. I, I mean, it, it seemed odd. It seemed odd. I mean, probably the best way to put it. Well, there's, it's quite a mixed reaction. I've spoken to quite a few Derby fans and. Um, yeah. Like some of them are saying it, like it was an absolute joke of a decision, but then some are saying you know the playing style wasn't improving, the players themselves weren't improving, and that yeah. it was the right decision. It, I think that 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 might have been true, but like I think we were I think we were fifth then as well when he got sacked, and it was like a guy's first managerial job. It was you know six seven months into it. I think to expect that much in that short space of time is yeah. Odd. That's what I mean. It seems it seems like there was something else going on, but. You know, who knows? But it was a really strong start to the season, wasn't it? Like, up, you know, for uh, second, I think, in the league for quite a while. And then... Yeah, it was like, I think it was like the first five or six games of the season. I don't think he got a win for a little while. Then we got knocked out of the cup by Portsmouth, I remember. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, then we went on a run for like 12 or 13 games and we went up second. It just, it just, it just seems... Yeah, but I think, I think it just... Something... It was like the last. It was, I think it was after like the United game, the FA. Uh, was it the FA Cup, the Con Cup, the United, uh, the Man United the game. FA Cup. The FA Cup, and it was. It seemed after that, just from the press and the fans, that it was just there was sort of just discontent generally around the club. All right. Um, it, was still, it was still a massive surprise for me to get a side up. Can't lie. Yeah, Nick, is there anything you want to ask about Derby or the uh, in the Sean Barker documentary? Um, yeah, just really Derby. Do you think you uh, people win the playoffs or? I think uh, I think this is going to be the tightest year for the playoffs for a long time. I think all four clubs have got a really, really decent chance. I think probably Brighton will sneak it. Um, yeah, I think Brighton will sneak it, but it's the playoffs. You know. Just a quick mention, you can follow us on Twitter at v 2 Football. You can check out our Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, you can also check out Ashley's work on the Sean Barker documentary. It's at uh, Sean Barker Doc. I'll put both Twitter links in the description. It's good night from me and it's good night from Nick and Ashley. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, this is Bianca Westwood from Gillette Soccer Saturday on Sky Sports and you are listening to the V2 Football Podcast.